Hello and welcome back to Cinnamon Sanctuary. Today we are making beef lasagna so delicious, so please stay tuned if you want to find out how I go about making this. On my work surface I have spread out all of the ingredients that will be needed to make the beef lasagna, but I will also list them in the description box as well as the measurements. But very briefly, for the beef lasagna and not shown here, I will be using about 750 grams of lean minced beef, some onion, garlic, carrots by way of vegetable, various seasonings, so all-purpose seasonings, salt, pepper, some thyme, parsley, a couple of bay leaves, and a jar of tomato sauce. For the white bechamel sauce, we'll be using some milk, butter, a bit of flour, and two types of cheeses, so I chose to go with cheddar cheese as well as red Leicester. Our first step will be to brown the beef mince. So we're going to start out by sweating some onion and garlic. So I'm using about one onion that I've chopped and diced in pieces and two to three cloves of garlic diced. And we're just going to let this cook for a little bit and let it become translucent before adding in our minced beef. The onions and garlic have been cooking for about three to four minutes and now I'm just dropping in the beef mince. As mentioned, I'm using 750 grams of lean beef and I prefer the lean version because it tastes a lot better and it's a little bit healthier. So I'm just breaking it all up and ensure that I keep stirring. Make sure that you keep stirring when you're cooking, when you're trying to cook the minced beef because if you don't, you end up with massive lumps. So you just have to keep stirring until you find something looking like this. Our beef is pretty brown now, so this is the best time for me to start adding in my seasoning. So I just went in with a couple of bay leaves, some thyme, a bit of parsley, some aromagno, all-purpose seasoning, some salt and pepper. And I will also be using a Schwartz seasoning, which I'm going to show you the pack of right in a minute. So this is it. I like to use this for pasta-based dishes. It's a Schwartz Bolognese um, seasoning. It's quite nice and I just dropped in about uh, one tablespoon all-purpose seasoning and just adding it all in and we'll be stirring this let it get in get to know each other for a little bit before adding in your tomato puree I decided to go with carrots by way of vegetable. Usually I would add carrot as well as celery, but I didn't have any celery on hand, so I just went with the carrot. And I'm just stirring this in before adding my jar of tomato sauce. Once the pasta sauce has been added into the beef mince, we can now cover the whole thing up and let it cook for approximately 30 minutes, after which we can set it aside. While the beef mince is cooking, we can now go ahead and make our bechamel sauce or cheese sauce. So I just dropped about two tablespoons of butter into a pan, which I'm going to let melt very slightly before adding about two to three tablespoons of plain flour. So it's very important once you've added the flour into your butter that you keep stirring because otherwise if you don't, you just end up with a lot of lumps and you'll end up with the mixture burning at the bottom. So we formed something called a roux. So a roux is um, a mixture of flour and butter and this turns into a paste 
and you're just going to keep stirring until you find the paste and once it's nice and thick you can add your milk very gradually so I do this very slowly I add a little bit of milk stir and then add milk again and stir and you just keep doing this and this will also avoid too many lumps in your bechamel sauce I should also stress that this whole process should take place on low to medium heat otherwise you just end up burning the sauce. So now we're just going to add a couple of handfuls of cheddar cheese and I also decided to add a couple of handfuls of red Leicester cheese. Um, it's entirely up to you which types of cheeses you want to use but I recommend that you go with either cheddar, um, mozzarella or even parmesan cheese. It's quite nice with lasagna. So I'm just stirring this up a little bit and letting this thicken. Once the cheese has been added, I recommend that you don't let this on the hob, leave this on the hob for longer than five minutes. So the cheese would have been added and then I add a little bit of seasoning. So with my bechamel sauce, I like to add a little bit of nutmeg that has been grated some pepper i don't tend to go in with salt because the cheese is already very salty so tread with caution there Now that the beef mince and bechamel sauce are cooked, we can start constructing our lasagne. I'm just using these Barilla lasagne sheets, but you can use any sheets of your preference. So to begin with, I'm just spreading some beef mince onto the dish and making sure that it covers the whole surface. And then you can follow this up with a few tablespoons of bechamel sauce. It doesn't have to look perfect, just spread it as you wish. And then you can add your lasagne sheets and you repeat the whole process until you get to the top of the surface dish. We've been stacking away and I managed to achieve about three layers and I'm just finishing this off by adding the remainder of the beef mince onto the sheets and just spreading this all over and then I'm following this up with a few more tablespoons of bechamel sauce to which I will then add a few handfuls of the cheddar cheese and the red Leicester cheese and as a final final step I will then add the remainder of the bechamel sauce all over the lasagna.
I'm now going to cover this up with foil and put it in the oven, let it cook at 190 degrees. And the reason why I'm covering this up with foil to begin with is because we want the pasta sheets to cook. And we let it cook covered for approximately 20 to 25 minutes. And then you can take off your foil and let it brown for another 15 minutes. And there we have it. Our lasagna has been baking for 45 minutes in total. So I let it bake covered for half an hour and then I took the foil off and let it brown for 15 more minutes and this is the final result. And ideally you want to let this set before slicing any pieces off but I really, I really wanted to show you what the inside looked like and I'm just slicing off a piece and as you can see it's nice and golden brown, it's lovely, it's looking really well done and this tasted really delicious as well. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like and a comment and I'll see you very, very soon on my next video. Bye.